My name is Joe Falick. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications for Veterans Florida and really appreciate everyone joining us. I think everyone is familiar with our mission, but briefly, Veterans Florida is entering its 10th year of helping veterans and separating service members start their civilian careers in Florida or start or grow their own businesses here in Florida. And it's a job I love and it's a job that's made somewhat easy because who doesn't want to go to Florida, right? We already have the, uh, you know, we have the, uh, we have the environment, we have the warmth, but we also have some incredibly vibrant industries that, um, pun intended, are skyrocketing right now in Florida. You know, as everyone knows, you know, the, aeros the uh, aerospace in aerospace uh, field started here, Cocoa Beach, right back in the day over on the Space Coast. And uh, I was just over the Space Coast this weekend, and all you see in the sky, if you're not seeing rockets, you're seeing construction cranes. They are just really, uh, it's booming over there. So I am, one quick note, we are recording this, um, and we will be showing it in its entirety on our YouTube channel. So I just wanted to make sure everyone know that we are recording. I'm going to introduce our three panels real, real briefly, and then we're going to jump in with some questions as we get to the, uh, you can pose a question in the chat, and we will try to get to it at the end um, if we, uh, if time allows. So I'm going to introduce our three panelists, to, panelists together, and then I will jump into the questions. We have uh, Linda Weatherman, President and CEO of the Economic Development Commission of Florida Space Coast since 1994. can imagine the changes you've seen there. <laughs> Um, and the 10 year in the 10 year period that was a fiscal year 2010 to 2020, there were more than 50 development projects in the Space Coast area with 1.8 billion, that's billion with a B, 1.8 billion in capital investment during that time. And I, um, you know, I'm not I'm not one to prognosticate, but I got to think that number is going to be higher for this decade that we're in. Mm -hmm. right now. So, Linda, thank you for joining us. We also got thank Mike. You. Mike's with state and local government operations at the Boeing Company, and their impact on the state is not just the Space Coast, it is across the state. Mike can share that with us when we get to him. He also most recently served as a policy advisor for Lieutenant Governor Jeanette Nunez. So thanks for joining us, Mike. Thanks, and, Joe. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, Ryan Gertson, who's the Vice President of Workforce Development at AAR. AAR provides aviation services to uh, commercial airlines and governments around the world. And uh, he's also president of Choose Aerospace, whose purpose is to uh, make sure that we have solutions for the workforce shortage. And one of those solutions, I think, is reaching out to veterans who uh, we know have unique qualifications and skills that can really serve them well, particularly in this industry. So um, I'm just going to jump right into it. We'll start with a question. This is for all three of you. Um, Actually, we're going to have individual questions for the first go around. We're going to start with Linda, who also, by the way, is a board member of Veterans Florida. Thank yeah. you for your service, Linda. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I think um, I think Floridians, people around the country and the world know the Space Coast is the birthplace, the heart of the aerospace industry. But as I mentioned recently, I think the numbers this decade are going to be higher. Can you tell me what exactly is contributing to the growth of this industry in the Space Coast and around Florida? Well, uh, yes, and there's many, many factors like any economic phenomena, but I think I could focus as a layperson. I'm not a space person, so I see it from a, a layperson's perspective. But basically, uh, we had not too long ago, maybe, and it wasn't that long ago, that's why this is such a phenomena, maybe three, four launches a year max. And now we have so many, we have 48, uh, you know, goal will be 200 in the next couple of years. Uh, a couple of things has happened. Number one, it's the um, the cost of launch has gone down. And the launch costs have gone down is because we have more competitors in the market. Also, and I want to give a lot of credit uh, to spearheading the space, not the U.S. Uh, Air Force, and opening up the markets and making it more easy to do business in, in space and launching and making it more of a partner relationship. They've really gone well in making policies. Now Space Force is doing the same thing. We're also bringing other parts of uh, the U.S. Space Command coming in here in regards to Starcom and the Delta 10. So when that opened up, uh, and it's just like any industry, if you have access to space more, you have the need for more launch vehicles. But when that cost of space went down, that allowed us to open space up for a very much commercial market. And that need, and most of that right now is driven by communications. Uh, we've yet to commercialize space in some way. Wait till we learn how to do maybe rare earth 
metals. Now I'm making this up, but I'm talking about another factor of space, of manufacturing in the space that we've yet to find. So right now it's an administration of, of putting commercial uh, satellites up there, whether it's defense and commercial telecommunications as well. So when that opened up, it's like any industry. Now you need satellite development. You need access to launch pads. You need more workforce. Supply chains tied to that. The financing comes tied to that. So that's what's happening. And if you look at the companies that have come in, and I'll talk about them in a little bit later, uh, they're all tied to that. Plus, the other thing has been the legacy of this state pursuing aerospace for so long. We have long been a driven uh, a driver in aerospace, aviation, and avionics. And so while space is really intriguing and sexy, we have a lot of companies with maintenance, repair, and overhaul that are coming here that really have a match. And Ryan would know that too with our, our, our military um, uh, to civilian workforce that we have. Yeah, that's right, Linda. You know, I'm of a certain age when I grew up, you know, NASA shot the rockets and that was it. And I never really, and I never had the, I never envisioned it being the way it is and with uh, with so many private industries going on there. That's uh, that's great, Linda. Thank you very much. Just going to go to Mike over here. Let's talk a little bit more about, you know, Boeing has, Boeing, I think people familiar with Boeing, they know that they employ, the Boeing employs people around here, but I think the impact on local and state economies is more than most people know. Can you talk a little bit about um, you know, how many employees Boeing has in the state, the physical locations, and kind of the uh, broad scope of the work that Boeing is doing in the state? Yeah, thanks, Joe. I mean, to kind of piggyback off what Linda was saying, I mean, just the the sector boom is really what's driven Boeing's growth in the state. Um, you know, we've got 3,200 employees right now across the state. Um, we boast nine facilities and field offices uh, from as far west as Fort Walton Beach and far south as Miami. Um, we primarily have two sectors of our division. So global services, which basically is working on, you know, whether it's F-18 conversions to the Blue Hornets um, or, or whatever, it, you know, anything with um, landing gear about out in Fort Walton Beach. I mean, we're touching every single thing. So our, our two primary divisions are BGS and then de uh, Defense and Space. But, you know, again, we've got our newest uh, two facilities. We have one in Daytona that was just recently announced. Uh, the governor, lieutenant governor, were able to attend that um, ribbon cutting. Uh, 400 high wage jobs that are coming to the Daytona area. We have a new maintenance repair and overhaul facility in Jacksonville, which boasts 400 new jobs. Um, we've got Miami Aviation Training Campus. We have um, a distribution services headquarters in Miami as well. Um, so we really are, you know, statewide. Um, and essentially what that means uh, for direct and indirect economic imp uh, investment, we're talking $1.3 billion uh, that Boeing has on the state. Yeah, that's good, Mike. Thank you. And you, you kind of brought up something as well, like uh, Spade Coast, I think we think of it primarily as Brevard County. But um, as far as aviation, um, absolutely. Riddle. Embry Riddle is such a big driver in the aviation industry, and I know that's who Boeing was partnering with here as recently as a month ago. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the Space Coast, the Space Coast is there, but it's uh, we got a whole coast of uh, employers and innovation. Uh, so thank you, Mike. Brian, um, you talked, uh, you have experience with our SkillBridge program. I think most people on this call are familiar with that. You can talk a little bit about that and talk about well, we'll talk about Embry Riddle. Talk a little bit about the maintenance uh, SkillBridge project uh, you have at Embry Riddle and how that impacts the local economy and uh, the future economy. Well, awesome. Thanks, Joe, and and good morning, everyone. And and uh, just glad to be on the call today talking about AAR. Uh, and what we do uh, as the largest maintenance repair and overhaul center in in North America, uh, most people, you know, they may not know AAR, but they sure know our customers, uh, United Airlines and Southwest and the United States Navy and 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 many others are are customers of ours, uh, and uh, we we had a chance to partner with Embry Riddle in 2019 um, in their first ever and the the only maintenance skill bridge program that that exists and you know if you kind of go back all the way to 2019 it seems like a long long time ago but you know we had workforce challenges in 2018 2019 and we knew that you know in order to, to address those challenges we really needed to to look at all avenues and and one of those was you know we we have exiting military personnel who are amazingly trained Right. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the pilot side, uh, you know, uh, ATEC, which is the a trade association representing all the aviation maintenance schools in the country, they do a pipeline report every year. And that report had a, a really alarming statistic. And it was that 
you know, on the pilot side, military pilots transitioning to the civilian career is happening about 75 to 80% are making that smooth transition. On the maintenance side, it was around 10%, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of those, there's a ton of factors and we'll talk about them on the call, but one of them was just awareness and then making, um, making a pathway known to, to our service members. And so when we partnered with Embry-Riddle in, in August of 2019 at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, which is the first base that we, we started, um, we developed a, a nine-week program. It, it led to 18 semester credit hours at the college level, but it also included uh, a Boeing 737 Gen Fam, which is about a $4,500 certificate that we included into this skill bridge program because we wanted the veterans, both those that had AFCs and MOSs in aviation to be able to transition and get that certification uh, quickly. But we also opened it up to service members who who really desired to be in aviation as, as technicians, but the military chose a different path for them. And we wanted those folks to also be able to get into this, this career path, you know, easily as well. And so we started it, like I said, August of 2019. We've added uh, six additional bases, so we're at seven bases total, including Herbert Field, which is our what we call our remote campus. So we we have folks at the Herbert Field campus that are from Hawaii and from Saudi Arabia, uh, all over the place that are that are using this program as a pathway, you know, into uh, into an aviation career. I would say at Michael and 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 Boeing is part of this uh, pathway program uh, with Embry Riddle, uh, along with Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman and Pratt and Whitney and Haco, which is another big MRO. Uh, Hawaiian Airlines is now part of it uh, because the the goal obviously is that we want to we want to graduate above ninety five percent of the students and we want to place into the industry above ninety percent. And so we really need partners to come alongside companies like AAR because, you know, we can't hire everybody and we want to ensure that there's great pathways to amazing companies. And, and so to date, I would just say in closing, we've graduated around just, just shy of 700 service members through this program, uh, through these seven bases. We're actually on September 9th, starting the last cohort of the year. We have three cohorts a year. Uh, and there's going to be around 60 or so uh, service members that are going to be uh, in in that program starting starting on on September 9th. So, Joe, I'll turn it back to you. That's great, Ryan. Thank you. Those are good numbers. You know, one of the ones that stuck out to me was you saying 10% of the uh, repair staff you know going from military to that path in civilian career, and I think that's kind of why we're here. Is um, we. Uh, like I think when you get out, you are inundated with so much information on what to do. And maybe it's sometimes easy to miss a career path that is right there in front of you, but it's just hard to visualize that. So I think that's why we're here. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate yeah, it. I was just going to say, Joe, to that, I, I, I think that was the stat that we as an industry on the at least the civilian side have really rallied around to try to make that more in line you know, with the pilot group. And I think you're right. It's, it's just awareness and, and knowing that the career of a technician on the commercial side is, is, I, I would go as much as to say it's radically different than what a technician might experience in the military world. So just creating that awareness, I think is really important. Exactly. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. I'm going to ask uh, the same question to all three of you as we go through this round. And I think, um, why, in, I mean, we've, we've seen veterans and separating service members thrive in these industries. Um, can you talk a little bit, let's get a little more detail for uh, for that. Why would a recently retired veteran succeed in this industry? What do they bring to the table? Maybe some of it's hard skills, it might be soft skills as well. And maybe an example of a particular skill in the military that will be applied when, once they join the civilian aerospace market. And uh, Linda, we'll start with you. Yeah, I think what I found, uh, again, I, Ryan did just a superb uh, job of talking about sort of the transfer of skills with the A&P. And Ryan, I've been to your facility when you graduated about eight uh, individuals and just really quick how you honored them and respected the work that they're going to do for AAR. It's just a testament that you value uh, uh, even from the production side to the administrative side, your employees. And it was quite a wonderful thing. I was in, And I was uh, 
pleased to be part of it. So that's how you honor employees and, and they stay when you do that. I've seen a lot in the areas, um, two ways, if I can jump in here with hiring our heroes too, but uh, I've seen it in project management uh, more than anything. You think you'd see that maybe in the A&P transfer, maybe in cybersecurity. Of course, you've seen that in there. They have cyber clearances. They can come and transfer that into the civilian world. But I, I can just describe on how they've handled a uh, big project and the management of projects, whether they're construction management. I'm seeing veterans go into uh, project management in regards to uh, uh, dealing with a, um, a defense contractor and everything like that. There's where I've seen it also. I've also seen if I can get a two cents and just jump in there with hiring our heroes. Heroes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that's that's overlooked. We're a hiring our heroes uh, certified site, and that's basically getting our businesses to recognize the importance that uh, military spouses bring to the area. I've hired a military spouse. I've had military spouses uh, work for me in the past, and they're a source, and they're as diverse and uh, really keenly trained as really even the military personnel too. Plus, they could handle a lot of balls in the area. Uh, in the area. You know, you come in, you move. Don't underestimate uh, the skill that that comes in when you come in and you're moving from place to place. You really have to have your ducks in a row and be organized. And if you could do that at home on a one or two year basis or three years, got a group in the military, you certainly can handle that in a work environment. Yep, that's great, Linda. Thank you. I appreciate you mentioning spouses too. It's yeah. pretty frequently a package deal. And uh, with aviation aerospace booming, that um, provides uh, some help for uh, spouses wanting to relocate as well. Yeah, you know, because there's opportunities for them as well. That's great. Thank you, Linda. Mike, same kind of question. Um, why would a vet um, succeed in this industry? And maybe some, uh, maybe some numbers specifically with Boeing that you might have on that as well. Yeah, no, and look, I think Linda summed it up beautifully. I think when you boil it down, the conversations I've had with our team um, internally, as well as our external stakeholders, they're disciplined and mission driven. I mean, those are things that are instilled and, and are difficult to train. And I don't want to trivialize the nature of the work that we do in aerospace, um, but there's a lot of skills in there that you can actually train. And so when you have someone who is discipline, ready to work. Um, and again, they're focused on completing the mission. I think that's just a recipe for success. Um, you know, so what does that look like within Boeing? Um, Fair 360 just recently named Boeing as the number two employer for veterans. Um, and what does that look like numbers wise? We currently over 14% of Boeing um, staff are veterans. Um, and in 2023, nearly one fifth of all of our hires were veterans. Uh, in Florida, we have a about over 800 veterans right now, and obviously uh, many retired um, veterans that, that have also worked for Boeing as well. Uh, but, you know, I, I just can't stress the importance of that enough. You know, when you have someone who is just so focused on making sure that they do the best that they can, that they're they're driven to complete the mission, um, that goes a long way in aerospace. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. Brian, um, we can... Um, we can talk about this a little bit more, but I think you have some specifics on this that you might be able to share. Uh, it's And that's around uh, Congress passing the uh, 2023 Reauthorization Act, significant workforce inquir requirements to include a grant program and veteran certification requirements. I just put some I just put a bunch of government words out there. Uh, I know you know it. Can you break that down into civilian language for everyone else on the call? Well, I thought I think you know Linda and Michael did a great job. Uh, obviously, we're we're no different, right? We when we when you talk to our general managers of our facilities around the country, I mean, when, when they have an opportunity to hire a veteran, they they one hundred percent do that, and and they do that for all the reasons that have been just just stated. But I I think for for me, one of the things that that we're seeing, at least on the AAR side especially when you get a service member that that knows that that is not an aviation MOS in in maintenance how really truly transformative they they are in in what they bring to to the table I, I, one one guy in particular he was drone pilot but he always wanted to be a technician and so he came to us as as being a drone pilot in the military but but you're like well, well how, how did he transition and 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 the answer is, well, because of his, of what he learned and because of that integrity and because of that duty and responsibility, right? He took all of that into the, 
a new career field, right? And and we have a national apprenticeship program and uh, that's based upon FAA um, certification. And so service members that are, that are veterans can also use their VA benefits. And we found that to be an incredibly valuable tool, um, you know, in the marketing side, as well as giving these technicians that might not have MOSs and AFCs in aviation, a really strong path of they can control their basically their destiny, how fast you want to work to get to certification is laid out in our national apprenticeship program. And we find that the service members, they just jump on that right away because they have a clear vision, they have a clear mission, they have a clear path, you know, ultimately to certification. And, and in our world, certification means all, you know, access to all of those higher you know, higher jobs, a supervisor, a lead, a project manager, program manager, director of maintenance, vice president of quality, chief inspector, all those things, you know, really open up that way. So with regards on 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 FA reauthorization, and, and, and I don't expect maybe lots of people on this call to spend lots of time watching bills pass through Congress, because I could think uh, there's a lot better time to spend maybe better time to spend. But uh, there was one in particular that, that that everybody on this call, at least on the speaker side, really knows and understands, which is the Federal Aviation Reauthorization Act. Uh, last one happened in 2018. This one is the 2023 reauthorization. As, as you know, it was introduced in 2023, but not signed because uh, Congress takes a while uh, to get things done. Um, finally signed it, bipartisan, bicameral, uh, five-year reauthorization. Uh, but there's two things in there that I that I want to just bring this group, um, you know, to to be aware of. And the first off is in 2018 we started a grant program um, uh, out of the Federal Aviation Administration. There was nothing like this um, before. It was a five million dollar grant program for aviation maintenance. Uh, there was also a pilot component to it. Um, and on the maintenance side, it has now been plussed up. So it went from five million now to 20 million. Uh, and 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 that's a significance because um, the amount of applications that came in to this grant well 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 exceeded the amount of that this you know the amount of money available. So for example, in the the first round of funding, there were three hundred and twenty six applications for five million dollars in funding. Right, so very, you know, many, many people uh, had had no chance of of getting some some dollars to to, to help help their work local workforce or or grow that workforce pipeline. The second thing I would say um, is is that there is a very specific section around veterans, especially veterans with MOSs and AFCs in aviation, to help them smoothly or or more smoothly transition their, their their credentialing that they receive in the military to civilian certification. Uh, we worked very closely with um, the entire industry uh, to, to really um, work on this 10% issue with regards to capturing 10% of the aviation workforce, uh, maintenance workforce, because it, it really came down to the certification process. The FAA made it very, very cumbersome and and it, and it really changed many many service members from like, hey, I'm not I'm not going back to school full time. I'm not going to do it that way. I've already been a mechanic. Why can't or a technician? Why can't I do that? So there's going to be a lot of of work that's going to be coming out uh, of FAA reauthorization 2023. There's a lot more in workforce than just those two things, but with this particular group, um, that FAA reauthorization grant and the, the new language to certification are going to be two exciting things that are going to be happening in the coming years with the Federal Aviation Administration. That's great, Ryan. Thank you. I appreciate And you've kind of brought up a question that I'm going to ask Mike now, and that is that, uh, you know, it, 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 takes, it takes everyone working together. And you talked about Congress, but I know in Florida, um, we've benefited from a sharp focus from the top, from Tallahassee on this. Mike, I was wondering if you could tell me a, you know, a little bit about what the, and I know you're not with the administration now, but um, they kind of set the tone for a lot of this. And maybe you can tell a little bit about how that support up top makes it easier for, you know, everyone down here to try to keep the industry growing. Yeah, no, Joe, great question. I mean, when you 
take a top-down approach, right? I mean, you've got everyone on board and you're thinking through not just the sector as a whole, but you're also taking a look at, well, if we're developing these little regions, these little pockets, what does our workforce pipeline look like, right? So what are the schools there that can help support the industry? Um, and the reality is, is, you know, Governor DeSantis, Lieutenant Governor Nunez have really set the tone um, that we're the premier gateway to space. Um, you know, workforce initiatives have been huge. The governor spent $8.5 billion since uh, 2019 in workforce opportunities. Um, th I mean, that should say everything you need to hear um, about, you know, how Florida views the aerospace sector and, again, how we're looking at workforce. Um, you know, we've done several initiatives specific for I say we, the state has done several initiatives, um, you know, to kind of look at that pipeline. Um, in 2022, uh, they made a $30 million allocation uh, for Space Coast um, advanced manufacturing positions uh, through three state colleges, Daytona State College, Eastern Florida State, or yeah, Eastern Florida State College, and then Indian River um, County College. And, you know, these were for practitioners from as far north as Flagler County and far down south as Martin um, County. So that just goes to show you the investments that have been made. Um, again, really putting your money where your mouth is and, and trying to develop um, a workforce that can support um, the growth and, and, and the work that we're doing. And if you look at Space uh, Florida specifically, I can kind of speak to some of the things that they're doing as well. I mean, over 170 projects in their project pipeline across the, the state, um, people want to come to Florida. Um, and, you know, it just there's there's no signs of, of our this sector slowing down right yeah if i could joe if i could also uh if we look at what we've done as a state and we think about it we have enterprise florida which is not department of commerce now but enterprise Florida for like from the term older term which is our state organization geared toward economic development we have space florida dedicated to for aerospace and space development and we have vet florida okay these three sister organizations what's the one that's most driven by workforce is vet florida and i know that this is a vet florida thing so i can say it, you can't but i think it is a testament to this a state how important that we recognize this talent pool and that this state is putting money into going out and tracking coming and trying to identify and uh, uh incentivize the companies coming the 250,000 individuals that retire on a yearly basis i think that's the number i heard from the last board meeting so i think if i had to say one thing you know a very it's kind of a nuanced approach to workforce development too finding this underutilized, very effective, very talented workforce, and what can the state do beyond the general applications for workforce development? And I and I and I thank the state for doing it. I, I'm on the board, and it's an honor. And uh, just I'm new to the board, fairly new, and uh, I learn something every day, and I walk away and uh, writing stuff down and making sure I apply it to our local community as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Linda, thanks for the thanks for the plug. I was about to ask you for one. Um, yeah. <laughs> he. Uh, he um, you know, as I was preparing this, I thought, what would I tell someone who's a separating service member or a vet or a spouse? And I was thinking, what would I tell them as the first step? And honestly, the first step I would suggest is to contact Veterans Florida. Absolutely. Because, because we are, um, we're aligned with industries around you know, businesses, small businesses, large businesses. We're aligned with them. We understand what they're looking for. And we align that with service members and vets coming out. We kind of translate that DD-214 language. We translate what the, we translate their resume experience into civilian. And, and yeah, and here is the big plug. We do this all at no charge, right? There's no charge for the businesses, no charge for a vet, spouse, or a service member. And if we can't directly help, we automatically will find someone who can. Um, we reach out to everyone who contacts us one-on-one. -on -one. So, and you're right, like, but then, and we have these other uh, supporting organizations. We've got Commer, we got Space Florida, we got people like you on the call today. So yeah, I think um, I would encourage anyone to just reach out to veteransflorida.org and uh, fill out a form and we'll be able to come back and uh, we can uh, we'll make sure we get you started. Um, we are, I think we have opened up questions. Um, so I can't see them. Lena, Elena, if you can, presumably you can hear me. Oh, yeah, I know you can. Yes, I can. Um, so we have some questions. Is that correct? Yes, we do. All right. Can you go ahead and read off one of the questions and then we'll uh, throw it over our panelists? Okay. So uh, the first question we have um, is regarding part-time work um, in the aviation and aerospace industries. Um, 
So our jobs, are there jobs available to veterans that are retiring from the workforce and looking for something part-time um, in the aviation and aerospace fields? Um, what opportunities would be available there? You know, I'm not sure if this fits exactly into the, the question, but I, you know, we we have at AAR a lot of part-time people that are working for us because they're either in college getting their, their full-blown A&P license, like, like, for example, we're in Miami. Uh, so we'll have, um, you know, we'll have, uh, you know, folks that are at George T. Baker Aviation Maintenance School, uh, well, and then they're working for us part-time in addition. So in, they're full-time, but they're, they're, they're kind of divided between two, two, two different uh, tasks, I, I guess I would say. Um, we do have some part-time positions, but for, for uh, you know, that we, that we have at least on the technician side, as well as probably us, you know, maybe like a parts tool room kind of person, mm -hmm. but most of our main, I would say 90, Eight percent of our technicians are are full time, at least at, at at AAR. No, to to go off what Ryan said exactly. I mean, the majority of our um, positions, well, are primarily full time. Um, we do see some part time work. Um, actually, just had the opportunity to go over to our Fort, Walt, Fort Walton Beach facility. Um, and one thing to note too, which I was extremely impressed with this number. Um, so that particular area again works on landing gear for f-18 and blue angel conversion i think i said blue hornet last time so my apologies i i said that wrong um but you know over 50 percent of that workforce is veterans um so i was really impressed with that um and there are some part-time technicians there as well um but again i think that's uh it, it speaks a lot to the, the site leadership um on kind of how they're attracting those workers and again trying to fit them into places where they, they want to be, whether that's full time or there's opportunities for some part time work as well. Yeah. And if, if I could, Joe, that's a, actually a really good question. And I'm going to put that in the back of my mind this morning. I had a, a breakfast with the uh, head of the Leonardo, Leonardo DRS that is very intrigued about hiring a lot of uh, vet workers. And it's a program they want to make more robust. And so that would have been a great question. Now, so I'm going to thank you for the, the question. I'm going to continue to put that in the back of my mind and ask our HR uh, people that I work with on, on a daily basis almost. You know, years ago, I worked with the finance people. And now I mostly work with the HR talent recruitment people. That shows you how important it is. But what I would say is if you we found a flexible way uh, part-time, it may be in our suppliers and our smaller manufacturers. Uh, I know we have our big companies. And if we have a minute, I want to talk about some of the companies that have relocated here just to give you an insight and some, you know, just real uh, specifics of what's happening in near term uh, in, within three or four years. But uh, Brevard County, although we are very much a manufacturing-driven county, we have almost doubled the share of manufacturing compared to the state, but there's about 500 manufacturers that are that are about uh, probably 50 employees or less. And it may be that's the avenue when you come in, especially as the labor market gets really tight. You know, if you can get something for part-time that has a skill or not, part-time might apply. And in a smaller company, it's more flexible. They might be willing to do that. If you're interested in looking uh, at companies uh, and who they are, if you contact your local EDO, certainly our, we know who our small manufacturers are, or Florida makes, they would have a, a directory of that. So don't underestimate make the smaller manufacturing supply tier companies as well yeah that's those are all good and again you know so like it can it can be easy to get lost with all the support organizations around the state but uh, mm -hmm. if anyone if anyone can start with veterans florida and we can direct you to the right uh, right we can direct you to the right way to go those were good. good good answers thank you elena we got a couple more right yes um so i've got a few different questions um regarding um, the a and and barriers to entry um, of the industry. And so just looking for um, any advice on adjusting and getting their a and um, as smoothly as possible. <laughs> yeah, what, what I would say to that, I mean, in, in my previous role, I was the president of Spartan College of Aeronautics and Technology, which is a big A&P school, started in 1928 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. 1700 students so i i dealt with veterans uh about 25 to sometimes upwards of almost 30 percent of our, our 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 students were in veteran status and so you know one of the things that I, I i always always encourage is make sure you get all of your information that you have on the military side um once you have that information the easiest thing to do is just go to a george d baker or a 
um, 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 or, or an, another aviation and Embry Riddle that that has the folks that can do the evaluation to your of your DD two fourteen and and all of your information to be able to get you on that. Here's what you're eligible for on either an airframe or a power plant or an A and P. And then they would also give you the the testing materials that you need to take your your general airframe and knowledge exam, um, power plant exam. So there's three exams and then potentially two oral and practicals. Um, I would also encourage you to look at, um, you know, the cool programs. Those cool programs pay for certification, so you shouldn't have to pay for, um, you know, the the, the testing uh, uh, for your certification if you're if you're so eligible. Uh, but I think once you get down that path, I mean, um, that that at least now gets you, uh, aligns you with where you need to go and whether or not you really even need to go to an A&P school at all, right? And the, and the answer, hopefully with this new legislation that went through, is that it's going to become even easier for you to kind of step through this process uh, because it's going to really take away the Federal Aviation Administration process from having to go to your local FISDO flight standard district office uh and 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 try to just bypass that and just handle it through uh through through the process that i just discussed so that's how i would do it and that's how i encouraged every one of my students when i was when i was the president of the school you know we want the schools want to maximize the benefits that you've already have and so they're the best to do that evaluation get you the documents you need to get you on that path to taking FAA certification. I have a new acronym, favorite FISDO. Using <laughs> um, yeah, it's a new one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Linda, anything else on that particular question? No, you got the expert right there. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking copious notes too. I'm learning more on this <laughs> than anyone. So that's good. Lifelong learners here. Um, Elena, Elena, we got any more questions? I think we do. Um, yes, we do. So there's a couple more that are fairly related, but a little more general than the last question. So just in general, um, what are some tips that you could give, um, uh, specifically retired veterans or just separating service members in general on how to communicate their experience in the military to hiring managers in the aviation and aerospace um, industry um, to get jobs because it's sometimes very difficult to translate military experience into civilian yeah. experience. And so a lot of people are looking for guidance on that. Well, listen, shameless plug, you, you go right to Veterans Florida, they they give you the whole suite and then get you everything you need. But no, I mean, look, all joking aside, um, you know, as a former service member myself, um, you know, it, there are so many resources available. Um, and, you know, Florida really prides itself on being the most military friendly state. So there are significant resources out there. I, I know this sounds silly, but uh, my sister was just leaving um, the active army after 13 years um, kind of came to me for some advice on some things that she should be looking at. And I said, look, you're in North Carolina. It's as simple as Googling sometimes, um, but there are so many resources out there. Um, in Florida, we work very closely with uh, in Jacksonville with Operation New Uniform, right? I mean, there are so many organizations that are looking to help you translate the work you've done on the veteran side into the civilian side. Um, to, you know, to, to, again, there's, there's, there's so many opportunities in the state to look across and just say, hey, um, th there's something out there for everybody. Yeah. If, if I could add also too, and you know, this is a state that I think we're already uh, ahead of the curve. I know we need to do more preaching about the importance of vet workers, but it's kind of in there a little bit. So I think the yeah. next question might be to evolve that is what do you do to get your name out? And there's some very practical ways that, uh, you know, we've all had that unemployment time in our lives. And, you know, we have career source each, a county has a career source. Google them. Career source. Uh, make an appointment with them. Uh, they may or may not have that. You know, understand the nuance of tra of transfer of certifications, but they know what jobs are hiring. And every federal, state, and local job has to be listed in career source. Mm -hmm. Every community also has a whole, uh, HR association. We have the Space Coast Association of uh, um, HR um, uh, staff, and that's 
every HR professional whose day it is every day to, to wake up and find employees. And they have lunches, and that was a good way to go out there. And, you know, it's a small community. You get your name out. I think a lot of people recognize the vet. They may not know all the, really probably the significance of hiring a vet. But I also would, you know, approach it uh, as just any job um, um, seeking option too. So career source, Google that for your area and your HR association as well. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. Not, I'm not on commission here, but I will tell you yeah. one more time that um, yeah, we work super closely with the local career source boards around the state. All of them. I think Ryan works for career source too. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. But it can be overwhelming how many services there are. So uh, you start with Veterans Florida, we can connect you with a lot of those. But thank you, Linda. It's good. Sure. Thank you for elevating that. There are a lot of other organizations out there to help, Ryan. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, I, I, I was appointed uh, to the Career Source Florida board um, and, 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 and I'm in my first year. And so I'm learning of this vast network and, and vast resources in Career Source, which, which again, I think are, are magnificent. But I, I kind of, again, if I'm a service member, I'm, I'm hitting Veterans Florida first. Right. right. Um, just because that's that's who I am and I'm dealing with that, those, you know, people that are just like me or have been. And and, and I'd also say I want to go back to, you know, Michael, Michael and I, you know, here we are. We have this skill bridge program together. So if you're really interested on the on the technician side and getting into the maintenance side of the organization, which is a, isn't just being a technician. I mean, it's very, very broad in the types of skill sets that are needed within uh, facilities like ours, you know, what's what's amazing, and I think most people don't truly recognize the significance, is that to try to get into a Boeing is horribly difficult, right? Believe, believe it or not, it just, it's very challenging from the standpoint that it's a large organization, whether it's Lockheed or Northrop Grumman or even AAR, and even though there's 10 and a half million open jobs, right, to, to navigate all of that, is really, really challenging. But for students who enroll in the SkillBridge program, right, they're automatically sitting at the top tier of organizations in the country, the Boeings and the Lockheeds and the Northrop's and the Pratt and Whitney's and the AARs. And I mean, those are all amazing companies where we're coming in halfway through and we're bringing our HR departments to you the veteran, right, and telling you what you need to do to to finalize your resumes. Here's some interviewing techniques. Here's here's the things that you need. Here's what benefits look like um, from civilian you know, in the civilian side. And so, you know, whether it's Veterans Florida, whether it's our SkillBridge program, uh, which is you know Embry Riddle based in Florida, um, I, I think those are just tremendous resources. Uh, that can really help you navigate the sometimes very difficult and sometimes scary process of trying even even knowing when to start or where to start uh, in your in your job search. Mike, I know Boeing has a very vibrant SkillBridge program um, and a page to, page dedicated to just that. So uh, yeah, Ryan makes a good point that um, SkillBridge is a way to uh, enter into, get a head start, get a head start in a career and jump to the top of the pack, Mike. Exactly. No, no, I mean, I look, I think Ryan summed it up beautifully. I mean, look, we, we've been a big partner of Veterans Florida now for the last several years, um, especially through our global engagement. Um, you know, we, we believe in that mission. Um, and it's, again, it's that it's that best opportunity and way to bring in transitioning military service members that are looking for positions. Um, Veterans Florida kind of helps connect those dots. Um, and, you know, we're the beneficiary of that. So I think everything Ryan said is spot on. Um, and again, we look to continue our partnership with Veterans Florida as well for that very reason. Sweet, um, go ahead, Linda. I was just going to say, Joe, aren't you, uh, isn't that Florida the skill bridge provider for the state? And maybe yes. you could explain that a little because I think that showed true leadership. It's one thing saying there's a program, good luck, take it on companies. But to take that extra responsibility, it's certainly helping us because yeah. we're working with skill bridge, not just with the bigger companies to make sure our medium, the small companies, yeah. our, our insurance company is very excited about that, wants those project management skills. And instead of us having to reinvent the wheel and them coming to us, we just interface with vet florida so it's saving me time and i will tell you we will get uh, skill bridge um, um involvement tenfold by but you might want to talk about that a little bit yeah. so yeah, thank you linda yeah um we are designated in statute as the uh primary skill bridge provider here in the state i don't know how many like 
I'm assuming a lot of folks know what uh, SkillBridge is, but this allows a, a service member um, up to six months, but I think that might be moving to three months prior to their uh, prior to them getting out. They can locate an internship opportunity at a career in a field they want to pursue, and they will receive their DoD pay through that time. Um, and yeah, Veterans Florida is the designated portal um, in Florida to come to come to with uh, SkillBridge. So. Yeah, we've uh, and SkillBridge is it's a win win win. I mean, it lets uh, service members get a head start. It lets employers get a head start as well. Um, try, you know, get us some training in for a specific industry needs. So, yes, Linda, appreciate that. We uh, sure. yeah, the, the nation's first designated SkillBridge operation. And I think we have one more question, then we can do a wrap up. Elena, you got one more? Yes, I got one more. So, Michael Thoreau asked, um, as a Florida native coming back to the state, what advice do you have to get ahead of the hundred plus applicants on the positions mm -hmm. within the defense industry powerhouses? Okay. I mean, I think, you know, one of the things I'll start, I think what Ryan said earlier, right? It, it kind of differentiating yourself too, right? I mean, the, all these things are great, but just continuing those, find those opportunities and ways to differentiate yourself um, through, you know, volunteer programs, uh, you know, mentorships, whatever that looks like, um, you know, resume building, I think is a, is a big part, I, at least from my friends that are transitioning out, that seems to be the one thing that always kind of hangs them up on is how do I do a civilian resume? How, what are the things I need to be talking about? Um, and again, that's an area of focus that Veterans Florida can help on or other organizations as well. Um, but I would say really, again, just finding those opportunities to differentiate yourself um, and give yourself that leg up. Yeah. yeah. Linda, specifically out in your neck of the woods, um, we have, you combine two of my favorite things, which is helping vets find jobs and beer. You have... Uh, yeah. You, you have some network you you host networking opportunities out there maybe talk a little bit more about that yeah and this is a uh, kind of a a way that uh to to it, it it's really been quite successful we hope that we kind of we put on hiatus this summer but what we've done is we've reached out again focusing on small and medium-sized companies and they're all well paid they're you know they're they're prime subcontractors are the primes and the primes as well we'll get them involved but that is ryan was exactly right you could be talking to somebody local says i want you and you're not even hired locally. You're hired by your, you know, division and, and somewhere else in another state too. So that is a challenge uh, that, that we found. But what we've done is we've done on a monthly basis and we reached out to our veterans and said, hey, we're having, it's called launches and loggers. Uh, come meet companies that are interested in hiring you, bring your resume, talk to these companies. So it's done in an informal way. We have beer and some peanuts and stuff like that. And it's quite a, uh, it's been quite successful because uh, beer and peanuts and, and, and veterans and people want to have veterans made a, a wonderful fellowship involvement and the companies they're truly are companies that are really interested in this and it it wasn't intimidating you come in have a beer you talk and that's where what i found more than just here's my resume or here's my background is the advice that these veterans or soon to be veterans or recently retired veterans get from the companies. They'll give you that nuanced thing like, you know, you might want to talk to me, but here's who the division director you need to get to. So uh, it's something that we've done to make it less sort of intimidating, but it's been quite successful. And, and it wouldn't happen if we didn't have the veterans wanting to show up and it's no charge. And if we didn't have the companies wanting to be there as well. All right. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think, Linda, man, that was that was great. I, I think one of the things that you want to look at is, is you know, and I think Michael talked about, you know, I mean, the question was really geared towards these, you know, very large defense companies. But I think when you look at the defense industrial base, it's 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 quite large. Right. And that there are organizations that are that are much smaller, but still do a lot of really unique defense work. Right. So I'm thinking AAR, even though you know, we're close to a half billion dollar company, 6,000 employees. We're small in, in individual locations in the standpoint that in our Indy facility, right, we have, a, it's a big Navy facility, right? We have P-8 sub hunters, we have C-40 airplanes. Um, those are things that, you know, we've been, you know, we've been in, you know, in engaged with the United States Navy for many, many years, right? We have we actually work F-16s, believe it or not, as a partnership with Lockheed Martin. And so I think just kind of, you know, make sure you broaden out beyond just a little bit. And 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 I think you might find that it isn't, you know, there's a lot of really cool companies that that 
don't have you know not, no disrespect to Boeing because Boeing is amazing as an organization and 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 has been for the mainstay of aviation in the United States. But there's there's a lot of other opportunities as well. And I, I think you know what Linda said. I think you're also looking for the right cultural fit. You know, one of the things that 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 we have really you know done at AAR is really worked on making our our making making our organization home for our employees right and and really um uh, figuring out ways to to not just attract talent but to retain that talent over time and and that's where you know getting to know them like the the, the peanuts and beer idea i mean those are those are things where you learn to know your employees on a much um more granular level and and i think that's what creates the kind of unity that that you need today uh, or that we need to do today in aviation because we got to keep every employee in aviation and not be right. taken from outside of aviation, which which is unfortunately what is happening all too much because they what an aviation technician knows is very, very valuable in a lot of related career fields from alternate energy to nuclear power to all, all those kinds to even even I would say, um, Walt Disney World hires aviation maintenance technicians to work on their roller coasters. So we got to keep all these folks yeah. in aviation. We um, so we did have a couple other questions. I don't think we're going to get to them today. But I, my commitment to anyone who asked a question is, um, if we didn't answer today, I will follow up one on one with you to make sure that we uh, get your question answered. And uh, you know, anybody can reach out to me anytime. It's my last name that you see on the screen, F-O-L-L-I-C-K at veteransflorida.org. And I think the email's on the uh, invite you got as well. But please, anybody reach out to me anytime and uh, we will do our best to help. So let's do one more, uh, let's do one more whip around before we call it a morning. Um, anything that you, any final words of wisdom, anything you didn't get a chance to talk to? And we'll start in the same order. Uh, we'll start with Linda. Yeah, if I could, I just like to, and it's not really bragging about our area, but it's it, it's a it's a maybe a uh, 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 an example of what's happening in the state of Florida and the growth of jobs. And, and again, it's you know, if you I read a book once uh, the other day about uh, London, and it was talking about 1640, and not to be so like cutesy, but this is London in 64. It happened right here in the Space Coast because what happened in London? It was the center for launching, and that became the East Indian Tea Company, and all these insurance companies, all these. Uh, uh, industries that we really didn't understand existed after this. So that's what's happening in your state. So that's if you're calling from out of state, that's what's happening here. But we have Starcom uh, for, for Patrick Space Force Base will be coming here. That's a strategic training and readiness command. Prior to that, sooner will be the Delta, which is the war gaming. And while those are military, they will be looking at hiring a lot of civilians as the sub suppliers there. The SO is coming in. We talked about the wonderful things that AAR does. The SO is here, 400 jobs mro company amazon project kuiper is going to be here uh we also have umbria which is here spacex blue origin space perspective lg harris so those are companies that have announced here or expanded here probably in the last maybe 36 months uh we understand workforce is a demand in many ways i told my board you know the dog caught the car in 60 in 2006 we predicted 10,000 job layoff in this area and if you don't think it was bad look up a 60 minutes coming in for a hard landing okay it was devastating here and we we're able to turn it around because we had a growth industry not because we're so great able to exploit that now this skill of the veterans coming i couldn't be more excited about taking advantage of it and the spouses as well so uh, thank you for letting me uh, talk a little bit about what's going on in this area that's fantastic linda we appreciate you uh mike what you got well that i mean that's well said you know we always look I think the state looks at Florida as kind of the, the breeding ground for all things within our ecosystem. And, you know, we always used to say that launches are just a byproduct of all of the other things that are happening. Right. So you exactly. need the MRO, you need the MRO work, um, you need the composite work, you know, you need these small companies developing the fasteners for, you know, uh, this particular vehicle, whatever the case may be. Um, but again, it's just a testament to the ecosystem as a whole. Um, you know, if you can't look at what Florida's doing right now um, in terms of just re just last legislative session, um, you know, taking Tyndall Air Force Base and Homestead Air Reserve Base and making those space state 
designated spaceport territories, um, there is an appetite for further growth in this industry. Um, and the AARs and the Boeings um, and all the other companies that Linda mentioned, you know, we're, we're here for a reason. You know, we're starting to see the significance and importance that Florida is playing in our aerospace growth. Um, and, you know, again, I'm going to kind of just pivot back to what we initially talked about. You know, I mean, a, a lot of that is on the shoulders of our veterans. They're coming in and doing the great work that we need done. Um, and, you know, the organizations like Veterans Florida, all these other organizations across the state um, are able to continue to help us supply the demand um, for that need in, in terms of workforce. Thanks, Mike. I want to use this pun. Um, Ryan, I need you to bring it in for a landing. <laughs> Well, man, I live it. To follow the uh, two great speakers, uh, it's just, uh, you know, I would just say, you know, growth, growth, growth in Florida, right? Uh, even AAR is experiencing, you know, we're building a new hangar in Miami. Uh, that's going to add another three additional heavy check lines uh, for United Airlines. It's going to be, um, uh, what is it, about 14 lines of maintenance at the Miami International Airport. We have a landing gear facility. It's experiencing growth. We're out at Patrick Air Force Base. Um, as well in our WASP program uh, for the United States State Department. And I, I just think the opportunities of Florida are, are so numerous, right? It almost makes it challenging, right? There, there's so many things that you can do. But I, I, I just, again, and we've said this over and over again, as a veteran, right, you need to leverage your veteran state organization, which is Veteran Florida. It, it, it will save you so much time so much you know difficulty in trying to navigate because joe can call us right you can go hey ryan i got a veteran you got to talk to him okay um, boom look i mean that's how simple some of these things are and so i i just think of a florida within the state we've talked about the investments um significant investments and and i would just say from 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 the you know the the Department of Education, which which is obviously the universities and, and colleges and community colleges, their alignment into workforce is truly remarkable. Mm -hmm. You have the jobs growth grant out of out of, you know, Alex Kelly's group at, at Commerce, right? That is true, truly focused on job creation. You've got career source, right? Truly focused. And then if I'm a veteran, I've got a veteran organization that is also truly focused. In, in helping me find um, you know my my place in 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 this workforce so so I just I, I you know the the future is is extremely bright for Florida and and I think you've got all of the right companies you've got all the right resources uh, to make it a, a long a, a lasting and and what I like to say a six figure career so um, really happy to be on the call I appreciate it Joe and the team for putting this together. Well, it's it's my pleasure, and um, you know, we, the, our job is made easier because of everyone on this call and the thousands of people who can't be on the call today who are helping us out too. The state's really committed to making sure that veterans can find a fulfilling, good-paying career when they get out in the state of Florida. So I appreciate it, Linda, Mike, Ryan. I don't know if I could have picked three better people to join us today. I really do appreciate it. To everyone else attending, my email. My last name, F-O-L-L-I-C-K, at veteransflorida.org. If you ever have any questions, let me know. I probably won't be able to answer it, but I'll find someone who does. And uh, we just want to thank everybody for joining us today. It was great. And we will be, this is recorded. We will be posting on our YouTube uh, page very shortly. So thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, 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 guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate you all. Bye -bye.